Some consider him as the best journalist among chess players. I would say the best chess player among journalists. His name is synonym to chess. Our, our guest today is Sagar Shah from Chess Base India. Thank you so much, Sagar, for Thank joining you. us. In every chess event, there are certain players who are always there, and there are certain journalists who are always there, and it seems you are one of them in every big event. Uh, how does this event look to you now uh, here in, in, in uh, summer camp? I mean, World Rapid and Blitz is something that I have tried to cover right since 2019, uh, when it was in Moscow, then in 2020 was pandemic, so 21 in Poland, 22 uh, last year was in Kazakhstan. So I've been there for three editions, this is my fourth one. And I think this one has the best playing hall amongst all three of them, beautifully set up. And also this entire Silk Road, uh, this, how, how do I put it, the community, resort, yeah. the resort, yeah, it looks tremendous. I mean, it doesn't look real. Uh, I feel like I'm in some kind of uh, made up world, you know. Well, indeed. <laughs> uh, but Anders, some have criticized, I mean, Hikaru Nakamura has said that it's a bit unfair to have this event played so far away. Um, what do you make of that? I think uh, this is one of the biggest problems of chess players is that they have to travel to different places. Like uh, when we did an event in India, uh, Levon had to travel all the way from USA and he, ha he had a time difference of 11 hours, which takes roughly around two to three days to recover from that jet lag. So I can understand when it's far, far away. Uh, I think the people who live nearby wouldn't be complaining. For example, the Indians are very happy to come here and play. Uh, it's just 30 minutes time difference between the two countries. Uh, but yeah, I can understand when it, people are coming from USA, this is not easy. But it's a global event. I mean, it's bound to be far away for someone when it's a global yes, event. Yes, and I think event. for very, like people who are professionals, they would tend to come like two, three days in advance, try to um, sort of um, get over their jet lag and so on. But maybe, uh, you know, some play, like for example for Hikaru, every day is very precious, so maybe it's not easy to spend it on recovering from jet lag. So. You're covering chess events all around the world, you've been doing that for years. When you compare the level of organization of chess events in, in let's say, Eastern countries, like in India, like in Uzbekistan, like in Kazakhstan we had last year, and let's say to events the way they're organized in the standard, which they organized in, in the West, uh, in the US, or in, 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 in Europe. How do they compare <clears throat> from your perspective? I mean, I have covered events everywhere. In fact, I've played everywhere uh, chess. I think overall, uh, the events which are happening in, let's say, Kazakhstan, in, in Uzbekistan right now, in India, which happened the Olympiad, one thing which stands out is the love for chess that is shown by the fans. Uh, I can literally sense people just queuing up to meet chess players uh, and so on. And I think the organizers are also having this sort of feeling that we need to do something special for the players. So I, I have a feeling that this, these regions are putting their best foot forward. Uh, and it's wonderful that they are getting these opportunities to organize. Uh, as, as you said, uh, it's a global sport uh, and it should, be, it should happen all across the world. Getting back to the coverage uh, of, ch of chess events, you are and were a chess player, and I yes. still are, you st still play occasionally. Um, it's been four, four and a half, or maybe five years now since I've played my last rating event, so... Okay, but you still, it still counts, you're still in the rating yes, list, you still, still, still can play make them. some How chess. How difficult, and obviously you're, you know a lot of these people very well, you're friends with a lot of them. Um, some, I've been in a different uh, part of journalism for many years, not so much in chess, and one editor told me, I was in political journalism, one editor told me that every journalist should basically stop being a journalist after 10 years because through that time you build a relationship with people. And when you build a relationship with them, sometimes you have a tendency to give them a pass to, you know, at, at that point you, you stop becoming objective and that, that as a journalist you should always try to be objective, so it's difficult. So for you, how difficult is it to balance the journalistic interest and the fact that you're friends with a lot of these people. <clears throat> I do not consider myself as hardcore journalist. Uh, I think I'm more like a person who wants chess to grow. So in effect, I'm very flexible about my roles. Uh, I could become a journalist when I have to write something and so on. I can also be a chess player, uh, an organizer, or for that matter, even a person who can collaborate with uh, different companies and so on in order to grow chess. So 
I have always kept this thing for myself that whatever is needed to grow chess uh, should be done and that's the reason why I do not want to sort of put myself in that one role. I understand that journalism requires objectivity uh, but I think um, it's like I enjoy chess and I cover it with my heart. It's not like I, I cover it because I learned journalism somewhere and so on. So. Right. And uh, some have said that, journalism, uh, that chess is a bit difficult to be covered, especially for, for on the big screen and, and for TV. Uh, chess Base India has proven that's not the case. So what is your take on that? And, no, uh, I think chess is very exciting. At least for me, it's very exciting. And I want to sort of bring that out. Whenever I do something, be it commentary, be it writing, um, there's so much tension in the air. Like if, you, if you're walking here, just inside, you can literally sense the emotions, the aspirations of people, the sadness, the hope. And I think these are the stories which need to be covered, not always the results and so on. For example, if you look at, um, say, a game of uh, Anish today, after he finished his game, he was just standing there and just looking at few other games. In that, you can literally sense his sadness of losing the game or for that matter, Vidit, who lost to Magnus Carlsen in a drawn game. He was there, Magnus was happy, there was emotions of happiness, he was doing an interview. You can literally sense the human side of things in the chess in a very deep way, uh, which other sports uh, are not so subtle. Yes, you, you can see literally people running around and uh, shouting and you know being happy. But here you have to be very observant. And I think that is what I, I enjoy a lot. Yes, there was just a very interesting case after Magnus uh, defeated uh, Vidit in this uh, round six game. Vidit was just standing hovering yes. above the board yes. for like a good minute thinking. And you could just, yes. the silence was speaking for itself. Uh, I think he was just going <laughs> over his, uh, in his mind uh, what he could have done better. And I think these are the things which a journalist who understands chess can bring out, saying that, you know, Vidit was standing there and thinking about these things, while someone who doesn't understand chess deeply would just think he's standing there and looking at the screen. Uh, so I think this uh, chess is, is very exciting for me. Well, but it's not just you here from Chess Biz and you have a whole team of people here. I think there's four or five of you. Obviously, your wife is uh, also a chess player and, and uh, one of the editors of your website. So how does your work, uh, how is your work organized? How do you uh, organize your entire team? I think one of the major factors in our team is uh, that this love for chess exists in each one of them. Uh, and whenever we go to cover events, uh, the most important thing is have we covered the event well? Not that these are the hours that we need to do our work and so on. So that is the most important criteria that I try to look for in people who want to work together with us and I think uh, the people who are here also have this sort of uh, thing within them that oh look today you know Magnus is leading we need to cover him right from the entrance you know um, this young boy eight year old just beat a GM we need to get his interview so this entire aspect right. of right. yeah the, the, the aspect is to not categorize this as work or hours of work, but to rather take it as something where you're going and you want to provide an experience for people back home who cannot follow this and to give them the entire 360 degrees coverage. And I think that is what Amruta and I started doing since 2015. And this is the same thing which others who have joined us have also begun doing. And what is the biggest challenge for you over these years now based on your experience? What would you say is the biggest challenge in covering chess events? I actually don't feel that there's any challenge per se. Uh, I, I really enjoy doing this. Um, I, sometimes I think, okay, time is a little limited. I would have loved if there was more time uh, to do more stuff. But um, there are no real problems as such. Everything that comes in this way is, uh, is fun and we try to overcome it. And whatever limitations are, we try to move around it and do it. Uh, so that's how we are looking at uh, our work at Chess Base India uh, and not really getting uh, stuck at any problems per se. So. But one of the challenges I know you've experienced and I know I have experienced and is, is trying to get an interview from the players. <laughs> Many players do not want to give interviews, which seems strange because that helps the sport and it seems normal. In chess seems to be a specific sport where only when you use, lose the game, you don't give an interview. In every other sport, you know, Novak Djokovic uses, loses a match for a million dollars, he's still there. 
angry with himself, but he's still there taking very serious questions. In chess, that's not the case. They would just brush it off and refuse an interview. Uh, what's your take on that? Yeah, I think uh, you are right that if people started doing interviews after losing their games, that would help to grow the sport. But at the same time, I feel that players are quite authentic with their emotions. Sometimes you look at them and uh, if you are just covering it, you will see that they sort of don't give autographs to players after losing or don't do interviews. And that's also a nice thing for uh, to, co to be covered. Not just in terms of interviews, but the fact that they are showing their true emotions. Um, because I think in any sport, when you are invested, uh, you do feel really sad after losing. So while I, I would really like if they do it, but for now, this is if they don't do interviews, then the aspect of covering their uh, emotions of not doing this, why are they not speaking and so on is also interesting for me. Oh, silence is also, <laughs> silence also speaks for itself. Sort of, yes. Sagar, thank you so much for your time and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Milan. Thank you so much.